Let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The meaning of spirit. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of truth, leader Olumba, Olumba, Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Second lesson, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Golden text. John chapter 15 verse 26 But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Quote Brethren, you have in the past been hearing about the Spirit, but you did not know anything about it. Today I want to reveal all about the Spirit to you. It is very common to hear people saying, The Spirit is moving inside me. What do they mean? Does the Spirit move in, inside a person? Others say, The Spirit is punishing me. Does the Spirit punish? I want you to take note of the fact that God is a Spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You would recall that our Lord Jesus Christ spoke about the spirit as the one to lead mankind to the truth. This he did because he knows that of all that is in existence, the Holy Spirit is the most perfect. The qualities of the Spirit includes love, peace, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, truth, faith, meekness, and temperance. The fruit of the Spirit in all goodness, the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. For the Spirit, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. That was in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 9. Having known these qualities, you will attest to the fact that no one can possess these qualities except God. God is not man, trees, mountain, water, or air. He is spirit. Whatsoever you come across, which is without blemish, same is God the Spirit. The Spirit is devoid of such qualities as annoyance, anger, cheating, duping, covetousness, fighting, quarreling, and all such vices. Whenever you find such qualities as, a, as adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, lamentation, wrath, strife, seditious, seditions, heresies, envying, murder, drunkenness, reveling, and rebellion, among others, know that the Spirit is not present there, and for you to befit the name a follower of God or a child of God, you have to be pure. Our Lord Jesus Christ saw the need for us to be pure as a condition for one inheriting this kingdom. That was why he emphasized that we should love one another. Recall the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 5 verses 44 to 45. It says, 
But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Brethren, God is spirit. God is perfect. And the spirit means perfection. When you are told to be in spirit, it means that you should make the qualities of the spirit a perfect match on you. For this cause, you have to be without blemish. After all, the spirit is virtuous and without vice. As many as walk in spirit cannot satisfy the flesh walking in spirit keeps you away from sin you will not steal or kill or hate beat anybody quarrel fornicate worship idol dupe anybody gossip think of ill of another condemn judge arrogate discriminate or call division beloved what you see happening in the world today is not strange to God, it is the consummation of the promise of God as recorded in John chapter 15 verse 26. It says, but the comforter, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Brethren, have you not seen that the Holy Spirit of truth, the Comforter, has come and is currently bearing the testimony of Christ? He is here doing his works and it is not and it is no disputed fact that he is without blemish. A wonderful teacher indeed. Our Lord Jesus Christ said. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Albeit when he the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. That was in John chapter 16, verses 12 to 13. Brethren, the Holy Spirit indeed started his works from where our Lord Jesus Christ stopped. He has no business with sin but cares much about the salvation of mankind. That is why it is it was destined that the era of the Holy Spirit shall witness and complete. That is why it was destined that the era of the Holy Spirit shall witness a complete turnaround of events. God had promised that he shall make a new covenant with man in this era and that he shall no longer remember the iniquity of man. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. That was in Hebrews chapter 8, verses 8. Verses 10 to 12. Brethren, if you trace the history of creation, you will discover that this is the first time that his spirit has visited the earth. No doubt he is the greatest and indeed the last of all divine manifestations. His coming in at this time has brought a new lease of life to mankind. 
and his teachings are life-giving. He does not only teach love, he practices the same. He has no association with anything called sin. Hence, he is perfect in all manifestations. Our Lord Jesus Christ did not bear testimony of Adam and Eve or any of the prophets of old. Rather, he bore testament of the Holy Spirit, which is love and which is glaringly practiced in this kingdom today. The Holy Spirit has neither beginning nor end, and he is without blemish, and it behoves us that we should equally practice righteousness so that we can have access to the kingdom of God. Do not behave like the children of darkness that delight in sin. We are the children of the light, and as you know, light dispels darkness. It is said that when you see the corpse of a dead person, tears will run down your cheek. Today, have you not seen the Holy Spirit personified as love in your midst? You do not need to ask somebody to introduce him to you. Look around if you come by one that is perfect and practice righteousness no that same is the holy spirit the comforter it is said that all will see him who in the whole world can rightly say that he has not seen the holy spirit he exists lavishly in all the nooks and crannies of the world if you claim not to have seen him you are deceiving yourself. The Holy Spirit has come as salvation to all mankind. For you to merit this salvation, you have to refrain from all sins, else you will have no salvation. Bear in mind that if you continue in sin and eventually perish, your blood will be on you. Read the first lesson again. First lesson, John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Brethren, worshiping God in spirit and in truth entails practicing love, patience, humility, and all such virtues. Above all, you must at all times practice the truth. Anything short of this means you are deceiving yourself. Beloved, God is not a being that could be hidden in a place or room. God is a being that is easily seen by as many as would want to see him. He is the light that brightens darkness and indeed a solution to all the problems of mankind. This accounts for the reason you have been told. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That was in Matthew chapter 24, verses 26 to 27. Brethren, now look at what is happening in the world today. Is there anyone that has not seen this love, this truth, humility, meekness, temperance, long-suffering, peace, and righteousness? This informs you of the presence of God. These qualities are exclusive qualities of God and those that walk in spirit. Therefore, if you walk in spirit, you will surely possess these virtues. But if up till date you do not walk in spirit, you are in darkness. God is lavishly 
seen in all the planes of manifest. Now, the basic thing is that except you walk in spirit, you cannot see him. It is only those that do not walk in spirit that complain that God hates them, tortures, curses, persecutes, and in fact, in treats them in one way or the other. These claims are not true. God is not wicked. He is rather merciful and kind. He is love. Except we practice this love. We are not his children. For a good child must resemble his father. You have to turn a new leaf for this love to really manifest in you. You have to refrain from sins and become a new being. For this cause did Christ say, Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. That was in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Brethren, we have no alternative but to be like our Father. No more should we live in the flesh but in the Spirit. Right from the moment that our Lord Jesus Christ pronounced on the cross, it is finished. That marked the end of the works of the flesh. The Spirit now reigns supreme. Since then, anger, hatred, division, condemnation, rancor, violence, segregation, arrogance, deceit, fornication, idolatry, and all such vices were brought to an end. We are now in a new era where only love and truth are practiced. This era calls for all and sundry to walk in spirit. Today, oneness is the order of the day. Except you join the band of people walking in the spirit and practicing love and truth, you are not a child of God. If you walk according to the dictates of the flesh, you have to die. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye, but if ye through the spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. That was in Romans chapter 8 verse 13. Brethren, we are not indebted to the flesh, but we are indebted to the spirit for not living after the spirit. This is so because living after the spirit is life eternal, but the flesh brings death. The spirit is truth, love, peace, mercy, humility, meekness, gentleness, and long suffering, and all such virtues. It is therefore completely wrong for one to profess to be walking in spirit when in effect one has not refrained from sin. Except you refrain from all vices, you are a liar in fact. You are not in spirit. If you are still in doubt of what the spirit is, read the second lesson carefully and you will know exactly what the spirit is. If you are rich in love, in joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, humility, and charity, then you are in spirit. Read the second lesson again. Second lesson, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such there is no law. Brethren, having read through the text, do you see yourself as one that has those qualities? 
only the spirit has these qualities. I have on several occasions intimated you that this spirit has never come into this world except now. This era of the Holy Spirit is first of its kind. The reign of the Holy Spirit you should the reign of the Holy Spirit you should know is not a temporary one but for eternity. It is only our Lord Jesus Christ that knew the significance and indeed the word of the Holy Spirit. That was why he bore testimonies of him. The issue of the Holy Spirit is elusive to man because our first parents, Adam and Eve, had reasoned and of course by listening to and obeying the instruction of the wicked one as opposed to God's instruction. Had they listened and obeyed God when they were told, when he told them not to eat of the forbidden fruit, they would not have find it difficult to walk in spirit and have it everlasting life. The problem with man dates back to the time of Adam and Eve. They did not know God. And because they did not know him, their descendants followed him. Their descendants followed suit. Out of all the prophets of old, none knew God. There would not have risen any cause for murder, idolatry, fornication, stealing, hatred, falsehood, lamentation, sorrow, mourning, division, segregation. If man had known God, our Lord Jesus Christ knew that the task of leading mankind to the truth is not an easy one and that it is only the Holy Spirit that has such capability. He promised that the Spirit will come. He emphasized that except he go away, the Spirit would not come. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. That was in John chapter 16 verse 7. Brethren, this you should note. This you should note would not have been possible had he not shed his precious blood on the tree of Calvary to reconcile mankind with God. Even when this was done, it is desired that you should practice love. For without love, you cannot walk in the Spirit. This is because the Spirit triumphs in love. As many as do not walk in the Spirit has no business with God. At times, you hear people saying, I am a member of a spiritual church. What qualifies them as such when they have not refrained from sin? In fact, they do not practice love, humility, or goodness and all such virtues. They fight, they hate, discriminate, segregate, they murder, worship idols, fornicate, they eat fish and meat. All these prove that you are still in the flesh your claim notwithstanding. Beloved, if you were to know the abundant blessings of walking in the Spirit, you would no more want to be in the flesh. If you walk in Spirit, you will be living a problem-free life. Our Lord Jesus Christ had said that when the Holy Spirit of truth shall come, He will glorify Him, our Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, he made it clear that the Holy Spirit shall not speak of himself. Today, have you not witnessed these words? Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. That was in John chapter 16, verses 13 to 14. Brethren, the Holy Spirit has arrived in a big way, 
doing his work effectively. He teaches love and practices it. If you lack love, you are not worthy of him. It does not matter the number of years you have put in as a member of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. The main thing is that you should practice love, truth, goodness, humility, long-suffering, temperance, and all the virtues that you can walk in spirit and enjoy his divine protection. <coughs> Excuse me. Brethren, anything short of this, you are dead. All the efforts you put in as a member of this fold is in vain if you are yet to gain spiritual control. If you do not have the Holy Spirit, seek for Him now, for without Him you are lost. If you profess to have walked in spirit, let it be seen in your lifestyle. Most people profess to have the Spirit, but little do they know that the Spirit they have is that of violence, disunity, etc. Had they have the Spirit of God, they would not commit any evil. The Holy Spirit of God is the one that does everything. He preaches and causes one to understand the works of God. It does not matter the number of times one reads the scriptures. If the Spirit does not aid one, one cannot understand what one reads. The Spirit of God is everywhere. He is the controller of the entire world. He exists lavishly in all the planes of manifest. He occasions love, peace, truth, and other virtues. He is rather, it is rather shameful that the people of the world do not seek for the Spirit of God. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is the mountain of the Lord as recorded in Isaiah chapter 2 verse 3. It is here that you are taught the ways of God. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. That was in Isaiah chapter 2 verse 3. I, brethren, I pray God to keep you till the full manifestation of this kingdom so that you may witness this glory of God in practical terms. You may be doubting now, but I tell you, what you will see will indeed convince you that you are in the kingdom of God. This is indeed a very lucky generation having witnessed the reign of the Holy Spirit. No doubt it is often said that he who laughs last, laughs the best. You laugh best because you laugh last. In no time all the prevailing problems of the world will cease to exist. The liberty and goodwill that abound now will no longer be enjoyed by those that do not possess the Holy Spirit. They will continue to languish in perpetual hardship, sorrow and pain. The greatest gift, brethren, it is out of foolishness that you are God for money, for houses, cars, spouse and children. You are rather supposed to seek for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ knew that the ideal gift for mankind is the Holy Spirit. Hence, he said, if you love me, 
keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. That was in John chapter 14, verses 15 to 16. Brethren, the gift of the Holy Spirit is the ultimate gift. Every other thing you request for accounts for the problems you have. If you have a child, yet you lack the Holy Spirit, the child will kill you. Even the, even the car, the money, house, clothing, political power, and so on, will cause your death if you lack the Holy Spirit. Take a critical look at what is happening in this kingdom today. You had earlier complained that you have not been able to serve the Father. But today, what is the situation of things? Have you not seen yourself doing the things you did not hope to do before now? Who do you think has done this. It is the Holy Spirit at work. There is little any man can accomplish without the Holy Spirit using one to accomplish it. As many as are led by the Holy Spirit have no impossibility. They are accomplishers. The task of changing man is a very difficult one to accomplish. None can do it except the Holy Spirit. Having found out that man had completely derailed from the path of rectitude and, em and embraced evil, he, the Holy Spirit, has personally come to change mankind and restore him to the path of righteousness. Brethren, no one has the right to boast that he is the doer of anything in this kingdom. The Holy Spirit is the one doing everything. If the Holy Spirit did not come in person, nothing that is done now in our time would have been done. The coming of the Holy Spirit has really brought blessings to us. He has brought us life, he has brought us salvation and has made us completely problem free. Every organization, club, society, and group is not without admission requirement. The admission requirement for this kingdom is love. Aside love, you cannot enter into this kingdom. And I want you to take particular note of the fact that the Holy Spirit is not that which could be bought with money or in exchange for any form of wealth. All that you need to have in order to be qualified for the Holy Spirit is love. It is pertinent that all nations, that all creations of God should seek for the Holy Spirit. This is so because as many as possess the Holy Spirit, cannot err. The things you see happening in our time is not just happening for fun. They are the consummation of the, spoken, of the spoken words of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded in Luke chapter 10 verse 22. It says, all things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. Brethren, no one has the Holy Spirit except the Son, and no man knows the abundant blessings of having the Holy Spirit but the Son, and those who the Son has revealed the Holy Spirit to. Nobody knows the way to receive the Holy Spirit. It is a consequence on this that the Son 
lives eternally so that he can carry on the duty of introducing the Holy Spirit to us. And the Holy Spirit has come to bring to our knowledge the whole truth. Without the Holy Spirit, man would not have known the truth. The teachings of the Holy Spirit, as you have all known, have gone a long way to reprove the entire world of the dogmatic teaching of the evil one. We are no more in darkness as many as have listened to and practiced the teachings of the Holy Spirit have been, have seen the light. Do not wait for another prophet or, an, or another spirit or any divine being to descend from the heaven. The Holy Spirit is the greatest and indeed the last of all divine manifestations. Thus, waiting for another is sheer foolishness. If you desire peace, blessings, and salvation, receive the Holy Spirit into your life and practice His teachings. His teachings are the veritable truth. Our Lord Jesus Christ said that when the Holy Spirit comes, He will bear testimony of Him. Today, you have now known why the Holy Spirit keep on testifying of our Lord Jesus Christ. All other things have ceased to function Every other government has failed. It is only the rulership of the Holy Spirit that is reigning and shall abide for eternity. Read the golden text again. Golden text, John chapter 15, verse 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Brethren, today, have you not seen the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, manifesting in the world? Take a comparative look at the happenings in this kingdom and compare it to what is obtainable in the world. Have you not seen the difference? It is the Holy Spirit that is at work. This is the reason why you see things moving perfectly well in this kingdom. Wherever love triumphs, fault is not found in anything. The issue of the Holy Spirit is better experienced than imagined. He is better seen than discussed our lord jesus christ knew this that is why he said to his disciples i have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now albeit when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come that was in John chapter 16, verses 12 to 13. Brethren, many during the advent of our Lord Jesus Christ did not know him to be the Son of God. They doubted him and engaged in campaigns of calumny against him. But today, with the aid of the Holy Spirit, many now know Christ as the Prince of Peace the Son of God, and indeed the mediator between God and man. His blood today have been accepted as the prize which reconciles mankind to God. After several centuries of sinful life led by man, our Lord Jesus Christ, through the teachings of the Holy Spirit is now known as the only Savior of mankind. When our Lord Jesus Christ was talking about the Holy Spirit, the people of old did not understand. They could hardly imagine what the Holy Spirit looks like. But today, you have seen him face to face 
and have enjoyed much of what he has accomplished on earth. Apart from seeing him, you have equally been taught the truth. He does not teach only a few. He has taught all the creations of God in all planes of manifestation. The peace the world now enjoy is occasioned by the fact that the Holy Spirit is in control of the affairs of the entire world. The Holy Spirit is very, it's a very precious gift and anyone that has him has no problem at all. You should realize that no price is too much to pay to have him. Therefore, I will advise that you let go all the material things of this world and seek diligently for the Holy Spirit and you will have him. And to merit this kingdom, you have to refrain completely from the love of the world and its fullness. Without this, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. No double-minded person will be admitted into this kingdom. One has to forsake the world and desire for the Holy Spirit, else one cannot be admitted into this kingdom. Therefore, surrender yourself completely for the Holy Spirit to come in and inherit you and also use you as he pleases this is where your success in life depends it is said that a stroke of the king is enough for the wise let they that have ears to hear hear what the holy spirit has imparted to the entire world may god bless his holy word Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.